Okay, we are live. is risen. The Lord is risen indeed.
us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Versicle and response. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Pasha Nacht. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah! Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he dies, he dies to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has also come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall be made alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, 14 through 24. I give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The hand of the Lord has triumphant. The hand of the Lord is exalted. The hand of the Lord has triumphant. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, he who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone.
This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Canticle 20, Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in glory of God the Father. Amen. The second lesson is from Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If you have been raised with Christ... Seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed to him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of John. 
Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, and one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter, reaching the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that what she had said, these things to her. The Gospel according to St. John. Very seldom when I preach do I come up with a title. But as things began to unfold, our lives have been changed forever. Being militarily trained and the product of two police academies, I couldn't help but think, and those that have been in the military will understand these two words, adapt and overcome. And I thought about this gospel story. While our lives have changed around us and are continuing to change, and as we walk with Jesus this Holy Week, we did it in a changed environment. An environment now that calls Christians throughout the world to adapt and overcome. To hold together tighter this day through social media and through the adaptation of the use of electronics and technology, a place that we never thought we would be standing in. And today I'm joined. If you ever thought that there would be a change, Father Charlie as a televangelist <laughs> ought to make you chuckle. It certainly did me. But I'm joined this day with other televangelists. Tom Jameson, senior warden at St. Clement, St. Peter's. Sue Mesa, senior warden at St. Andrews. David Franks, our IT person in virtual choir. And of course, Gina Sittler, 
who we're so grateful to, to have with us playing the organ, something that we so much miss. Yes, ask them when you see them what it's like to be a televangelist and to have to adapt and overcome. But be seated because the story is going to be lengthy. But that's exactly what the first Christians did. That's exactly what's happening in our gospel lesson. I mean, in the beginning of the gospel lesson, we see Peter as a slow runner. He gets to the tomb second. But the one who got to the tomb first did not enter. It's Peter that enters the tomb and realizes that Jesus is gone. And did you see what happened? He and the other disciple walk away. There's fear in their hearts. Jesus is gone. There's fear in our hearts as well as we look at this COVID pandemic. There's fear that surrounds us, but we're also surrounded this Easter morning by the risen Lord. Mary stays behind. And as she stands behind in her grief and in her tears, Jesus is standing there and she doesn't recognize him. And yet you and I know what that's like. We have been brought to a place, each and every one of us, sometime in our lives, where we've been crying, and the world becomes blurry, and we can only think of all the distress that's happening to us at that particular time. And Jesus says to her, Mary, he identifies himself, and she hears his voice, and she says, Rabboni, teacher. Yes, it is the risen Lord standing right in front of Mary. And Jesus says, do not embrace me, for I am not risen to the Father. And I think as we have gone through this holy week, I don't know about you, but I can tell you about me. It's been very difficult for me not to shake hands, not to hug, not to reach and touch my fellow Christians. It's been difficult for you too. I hear many stories about how difficult it is not to be able to reach out and touch a newborn baby in our families. Not to be able to reach out and hold and grasp an older member of our families. And for me, I witness each and every day those that are struggling in hospice care, that are in nursing facilities, and their loved ones cannot touch them. Oh, through technology, there's FaceTime, and there's Facebook, and there's a ways that we can reach out and have a meaningful relationship because we needed to adapt and overcome. To be able to adapt and overcome not being able to touch, to share the peace, the peace that so is so meaningful to each and every one of us. But the risen Lord goes on. We know and we will begin to travel with Jesus as he travels to his disciples this Easter season. Oh, it's not part of this gospel lesson, but it's coming. As I said, in many TV shoes, stay tuned to next week. Because there we will begin to walk with Jesus as he walks amongst his disciples. They too have been overcome by fear, a fear of losing Jesus. But Jesus will stand amongst them once again. The risen Lord stands with each and every one of us this day, this Easter day of 2020, when things seem to be so out of sorts. One thing is common. Jesus Christ has risen today. The Lord is risen. The Lord has risen today as the Lord has risen and has become part of each and every one of our lives 
through eternity. We celebrate this risen Lord. The Lord that is walking this journey with us. The Lord that continues to be with us as we struggle and we attempt to adapt and overcome. Amen. The Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us read the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our suffrages this day. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. I call it for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We hold up to you this day the world cycle of prayer. We pray for the people of New Jersey. In our ecumenical cycle of prayer, we pray for our sisters 
and brothers and members of the old Catholic Church. A call it for Sundays. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. We hold the following prayers and intercessions and ask you to join, that are joining with us this day, to hold up your own prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. We hold up to you this day those that are celebrating birthdays anniversaries. We hold up to you this day those that are recovering from sickness and illness. We hold up to you this day those that are traveling and ask for safety in their travels. We hold up to you this day persons that are in trouble or bereaved, especially in remembering this day those that have passed from COVID-19 and their families that are not able to be there with them at their dying hour. We hold up to you this day those that are planning to be baptized in the future. We hold up this day all that have departed. Please continue to hold in your prayers from St. Clement and St. Peter, Robbie Heller, Karen Sabatik, Susie Kaminsky, Joanne Wynn, Marcia Stanish, Cole Michael Thomas, Shirley Thomas, Pamela Prim, Heather Scarlett, Adelaide and Eric Hauseman, Fred Chapman, Lori Chapman and family. Dean Baker, Walter Reddington, Tina Reed, Sandra Dolan, Jim Thomas, Joe Alexander, Bella, Lita, Bernie, George, Brooke, Laura, Tim, Denise, Jordan, Jane, Chuck, and Dan. Please continue to hold in your prayers from St. Andrews. Scott Tanza, Stephen Hazary, Mary Vallette, Chrissy Blank, Bill Harrison, Jeremy Panetta, Carol Dupree, Vernon Torrey, Carol and Brian Howell, Janet Babsky, Donald Peters, Bill Engler, Bob O'Malley, Sandra Morris, Bob Gola, Ginny Orlowski, Steve Rembish, Carol Brocious, Ron Huck, Richard Rakowski, Diana Trundak, Chuck and Peggy Morgan, Richard Grohalski, Mary Holloway Manchester, and Peter Morris. A 
Apostolic for the Church. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth, in all truth, with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where it is in anything, it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is one, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. For church musicians and artists, O God, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be ever present with your servants who seek through art and music to perfect the praises offered by your people on the earth. And grant to them even now glimpses of your beauty, and make them worthy at length to behold it unveiled forevermore. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A colic for our families. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who places solitary persons in families, we commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we beseech you, every root of bitterness, the desire of vainglory, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, and godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who in marriage have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children, and the hearts of the children to the parents. And so enkindle fervent charity among us all, that we may evermore be kindly knitted one to another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
prayer to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, each of us, such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
join us here again at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and travel with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.